Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about holding pads like a professional. Today's episode, we're gonna discuss five different tips that you can do to be a professional pad holder. Too many times I see beginners holding pads and they can do some more damage to their partner than good. A lot of times everything is stationary, everything is very jammed, and nothing really relates to sparring and the fight. And that's the whole point of pad work, is to be able to improve your sparring and to improve your fighting. Get concepts developing and improve your technique. So the first mistake I see people make when holding pads is jamming the technique. When you want someone to throw a good straight punch, you want full extension in your technique. That's where you get snap, that's where you get the cleanliness of the technique. If I'm holding pads and I keep jamming the punches, I'm further jamming my partner's punches, which is making their technique look a little bit more messy. So it's important to give that feedback as a pad holder, but you don't wanna over jam. So basically it's like catching the punches like a parry, nice and short, do not over jam. You could one, hurt your partner's wrist, especially if they're a beginner who don't even know how to hold the fist and you start slamming the pads on their hand, wrist and knuckle problems can happen. So very small, give them that nice strong feedback and that return, but don't over jam. It's just one, too bad on injuries and you wanna keep the technique as clean as possible. The second mistake people make when holding pads is not understanding the angle to hold the pad itself. And that's one of the biggest frustrations when I'm holding pads or hitting pads with somebody else is not understanding the angle. For example, if I'm throwing a straight punch, a lot of people will hold the pad nice and straight and vertical like this thinking that's the way they gotta hold it. But really, I don't get good knuckle feedback on that and I don't like it, so having a slight forward down lets me land my knuckles a little bit better. And it's also important that everyone is slightly different. And some people prefer vertical, some down, it's all a little bit different. So that's why having someone who holds pads for you on a regular basis is gonna help you to understand that. I might throw a right hand and they might hold it too vertical, it hurts my wrist. So I make a quick adjustment with my partner and next thing you know, I'm landing clean and sharp with my knuckles, all right? So understanding the angle is just gonna help you land with more power. And it also gives me the confidence as the striker to know that I can hit that pad as hard as I can without injuring myself. As soon as the angle of the pad is wrong, it's just way too dangerous on my knuckles not landing right and it just hurts and I don't get that nice strong attack that I'm looking for, okay? So make sure you understand the angle, whatever the strike is, uppercuts, straights, hooks, Okay, all can hurt the wrist. So play around with the angle of the strike and that'll help one, let your partner really rip that power. You want that power, let them bring it to you and finding that angle will help them develop that. The third tip to being a professional pad holder is understanding enters and exits. Too many times we hold pads and everything is stationary. The partner's not even stepping, they're staying in a stationary spot. But in order to understand good concepts, you have to move. So I need to force my partner to step towards me or step away. So a good key to do it is just always move. So before and after the techniques, I'm moving, getting my partner to angle. Especially after a strike or a combination, I'm gonna walk forward or I'm gonna throw maybe some strikes in the air to tell my partner that, hey, you have to be out of range. You need to move, create an angle, and just create different footwork patterns. I'm a big believer in the triangle step. For example, hitting and getting out and moving and managing that distance. So that's an important part to add into your pad work. Fighting isn't stationary. It's about movement, angles, and distance control. So being the pad holder and moving around, getting them to create angles, use the triangle step, create that distance control and then attack again. It just makes fighting and pad work more realistic and is gonna help you in your further parts of training. Part four to being a professional pad holder is having things what I call base strikes and base combinations. So what happens now as a beginner, we tend to be focused on one combination only, which is important because you might wanna repeat that combination to improve. So. What the problem is now, it's what are you doing in between these combinations? So this is where you add those base strikes or combinations. A base strike would be a jab. So say my basic combination is a jab, cross, hook, low kick or jab, cross, hook, round kick. 
What I need to do now is with the enters, with the exiting, is building in the bass, so jabbing in between. So as a pad holder, I might say jab, jab, one, two, one, two, one, kick, and then boom, combination flies off of that. One, two, three, kick, move, create the exits, then back to establishing a jab. Establishing a jab is a bass strike. So in between those combinations, get them to throw those basses. Some of my bass strikes would be a jab, a one, two, and a jab round kick maybe one, two left kick. Those are all different strikes that help keep you scoring, help keep you active, but when the pad holder, or when I call combination time, that's when they mix in that combination. So one of the frustrating things when people hold pads for me is I wanna work, I want flow, I wanna get a good workout in. So by just throwing the combinations, it's too slow. Add those base strikes or base combinations to your pad work, your partner and your training partners are gonna get better work, more flow, and a lot better, more realistic style of fighting. The fifth and final thing that you can use to be a professional pad holder is using different tools. And this is where the fun of training as, as a coach for me comes into play. Each tool has a different area that helps it develop. If I wanna really work on speed, I might use the paddles or I might use focus mitts if I'm working on boxing. Sometimes I might use the tie pad. Sometimes I use the punch shield, the leg shield. So mixing and matching tools to allow you to be creative is the fun part of coaching. You don't always wanna fall in and do the same things over and over. So this is where I like to change and mix up my pad work. If you check out my Instagram, I'm trying to be as creative as I can with different types of pads. Sometimes you'll see me with maybe one focus mitt, one tie bit, the punch shield, and a low kick pad. So everything is about being different and adding these five different tips in. But it just makes it fun as a coach to develop things. And depending on where I am with my fighter or what they need to work on, the tool is also gonna be better. So with these little mitts, I might use volume, get them really using their boxing, knees, a lot of high output. So they're using the type of energy system that requires a lot of volume. Then I might put on my tie pads so I can get my partners to really rip those power round kicks, feel the power, everything power combination. So each tool has a different benefit, a different upside, and some have different downsides. So play around with the different tools, see what you like, and it'll just help you be a better pad holder. Be creative, that's the whole fun of martial arts is that artistry side of things where you can kind of create your own flow. Especially with my coach had taught me to use the single pads by holding by the handles. And now that's become one of my favorite ways of holding and a way that kind of has um, blossomed in the martial arts community to use low kicks, body kicks and head kicks all using the tie pads, okay? So I just wanna make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA, and make sure you check out HayabusaFight.com and their T3 boxing gloves, which are linked below, as they're my favorite with that double strap technology and that wrist protection. It's gotta be my favorite gloves right now. And make sure you check out BazookaShop.com to check out any and all Bazooka gear. And we're gonna see you next week here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.